Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for being here. My name is Rich Cummins, and I'm the president of Columbia Basin College. And I think at our, our longitude and latitude on December 5th, we could not have ordered a better day. <laughs> so uh, I, I really want to thank you all for being here um, to uh, help us dedicate our planetarium on behalf of the CBC Board of Trustees, our faculty and staff. Um, I want to welcome you to uh, taking this giant step to increase our emphasis on math and science education with the dedication of the Bechtel National Planetarium. Following our ceremony and rib cut ribbon cutting, you'll be invited inside to get warm and see what's possible inside the Community Enrichment Foundation Theater. My comments this morning will be brief because I'm the MC, so allow me to introduce the purpose of this great facility by telling you that it's an educational tool for our faculty and students and an outreach tool for the entire Mid-Columbia region. You will hear from a CBC student in a few minutes to speak from the first perspective, but for the outreach piece, I want to tell you that yesterday, after a morning event with our distinguished guests, the principal of the school in Colotus came up to me to say thanks. I asked him how many kids he brought and said, the whole school, that's how we do it. <laughs> and that's what I'm talking about as, as, the promise, as, as the promise of this facility to inspire young minds and spark scientific questioning and wonder. Cities, states, and nations, and indeed humanity, are fortified, enriched, and made prosperous by the, by the efforts of all kinds of heroes who see the great and small causes and are willing to put their shoulders to the wheel in whatever way they uniquely can. Our speakers this morning are exactly these kinds of heroes. Brigadier General Charlie Duke is the tenth of twelve men to have walked on the surface of the moon. Dr. Story Musgrave is the only person to have flown on all space shuttle missions and is the person you see hanging upside down in the famous picture taken while he was repairing the Hubble tel tel telescope outside the space station. These men are heroes on the international stage. But we have many local heroes, people like Duke Mitchell, our CBC board chair who served in the Air Force and retired as Lieutenant Colonel, and heroes like Dave Schultz and Dave Rutter and Frank Russo, who believed in this idea of a planetarium because they knew we would deeply affect young lives. It's these kind of individuals who build strong communities and help improve the quality of life for us all. Our first speaker today is the chairman of the CBC Board of Trustees, Duke Mitchell. Duke is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy and of University of Southern California. Duke served our country for 20 years, rising to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. He has given a lot of his life to public service and is a constant figure in many CBC events, as well as, as excuse me, as well as leading the college as the chair of the Board of Trustees. Please welcome Duke Mitchell. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. And thank you, President Cummins, for your kind introduction. On behalf of the Columbia Basin College Board of Trustees, and the citizens of Benton and Franklin counties and southeastern Washington and the surrounding area that Columbia Basin College serves, I want to say I have been very excited and very impressed with everything associated with this new planetarium. Yesterday, last night, and today I have seen and experienced what a valuable tool for learning and inspiration this planetarium will be. This planetarium is an impressive display of dreaming, foresight, planning, and teamwork by many organizations and many groups of people who care about science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and our future as a nation, and the future of our students and the next generations of the public. I want to congratulate and thank our dis distinguished honored guests for being here with us yesterday and today, and for the many contributions they have made to our great nation. And I want to congratulate and thank President Cummins, Mike Durst, and the Columbia Basin College students, faculty, and staff, the CBC Foundation, and the many generous, supportive, and dedicated corporate and community partners who have made this planetarium and this great day of celebration possible. 
Thank you again for being here. Thank you. We're honored to have a representative uh, from the governor's office, Sheila Collins, who will, um, who, who will share a few words uh, from the governor uh, of our great state, Chris Gregoire. My boss is going to be so disappointed when I describe to her what I've already seen, and, what, and I'm sure what I'm about to see will even be more disappointing that she wasn't able to join us today. But for, on behalf of Governor Gregoire, I am pleased to extend warm greetings to all of those attending today's dedication ceremony for the Columbia Basin Community College Planetarium. Today, we celebrate the completion of CBC's new planetarium, a $1.2 million project several years in the making. This wonderful new facility, the largest of its kind in the state, will be a great resource for teaching students of all ages about science and beyond. The research performed here will be critical for better understanding the universe in which we all live and will help inspire young people to pursue careers at a time when scientific knowledge and expertise are so vital to the future of our nation. I'd like to extend special thanks to all of those who made this generous contributions as well as those who have worked so hard on, with the fundraising and bringing this to fruition. I salute the partners for their vision and leadership for this important endeavor and, all, and offer a warm welcome to astronauts Charlie Duke and Story Musgrave, and I understand another astronaut, John Phillips, is here, and filmmaker Jerry Roth for making this a very special day for our state. Thank you all for your hard work and dedication, and please accept my very best wishes for continued success in the years ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sheila. Thank the governor for us, please. Our next speaker is um, a poster, poster child for Columbia Basin College. He grew up in the Tri-Cities. He attended Columbia Basin College. He's the president of our CBC Foundation, and he's the director of support services for Hapo Community Credit uh, Union. Please welcome Eric Clemens. Thank you, Dr. Cummins. Uh, I am just so proud and happy to be here today to uh, showcase this beautiful facility that we have here behind us. Um, as, as part of the Columbia Basin Foundation Board, we are kind of the silent partners behind the college. We take on a lot of things that normally others wouldn't. We look at visions and dreams that people would like to do here at this uh, beautiful uh, established facility and try to make it come true. As part of that, the Foundation Board has a great staff and I'd like to thank them personally, uh, individually, for all their efforts they do each and every day for us as part of what I support as being chairman. Those are Miss Debbie Risk, Miss Brenda Boone, I don't believe Brenda could be here today, I think she's on vacation. Miss Nancy Adams. Nancy, again, you do all you do to put on these great events uh, each and every time. My hat goes off to you. You're amazing. Miss Patty Jones and Miss Cody Spanner. Cody, you know, Patty, all of you, Debbie, Brenda, thank you all for all your hard work each and every day. And also to our leader of that, our CEO, Bob Roselli. Bob, without your visions and support and what you bring to the table each and every day, Again, we wouldn't be here. Many of us look at this as a teaching tool. For me, I look at it as a teaching toolbox. I was able to see this uh, a week or so ago, and I looked at the capabilities, and Mike Durst and Rich, for the efforts that they'd put into this, is a vision that they had so many years ago with support from Don Paddock, Tom Harper, and for me to be here now in this position, to see it come to fruition has been fantastic. But as part of this toolbox, we've got to place the tools in the box. And with Mike being a master mechanic as he is and orchestrating what he's done so far with Rich's help and others, we need to help support that. So we're taking on the process of doing that. And I'm hoping that all of you can help us do that as well. 
to put films in the library, to build a library for this facility so that it is available for our students and all of our instructors to use. As Mike so eloquently said, said last night, I can teach anything in this facility. But also as part of this, I also want to thank the administration here, the faculty, for all that you do, because you bring this capability to us. You're the ones who has the students that are making a difference in their lives. It's not often that we have a chance to do that. It's not often that we have a chance to inspire the people that we enjoy to work with and teach. So with that, thank you all for being here. Thank you to our great astronauts for their service, their dedication, and the unknown of what they traveled to do for this country. Thank you and enjoy. Our next person is, a, is someone I asked to help with this back in 2008, and uh, we ran into the Great Recession and a few other hurdles along the way, but um, without Mike Durst driving uh, the vision forward, uh, we, wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't be here today. So I'd like to introduce Mike Durst, who's the director of the Bechtel National Planetarium. Mike. condense up a zillion words into a few, but especially those who know me. Uh, I'm, I'm privileged to share this moment with you all today in the dedication, of course. Uh, I believe that personally that in years to come, it will play a key role in improving the quality of science education, not only here at CBC and at Heritage University, perhaps, but in the entire region of the Northwest. Throughout my life, I've had the privilege of being involved in many great endeavors which have been successful, but none, in my opinion, greater than this one. I've learned that to accomplish great things in life, you need at least two special things. You need vision and you need momentum. In 1961, President Kennedy issued his great challenge to go to the moon. He said this, it was referred to last night by Eric, we choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things not because they're easy, but because they're hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one we are w willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one which we intend to win. In 2007, Rich Cummins chose to build a planetarium. I'm sure, I know you, Rich. <laughs> that he knew it would be hard. And due to the economic downturn of 2008, it became even more difficult than we ever would have imagined. But like President Kennedy, President Cummins had a vision. He could see how this facility would become a magnet to attract good students of all ages to study science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And so, like President Kennedy, he chose not to abandon nor to postpone his dream. Bill Saraceno, Bill's here, a man I highly respect and who prefers to stay out of the limelight identified a way to build it cheaper, better, utilizing an existing building on campus, this building. Through his leadership, we devised an achievable financial plan that became the goal, that gave us positive momentum. And then due to the efforts of Bob Roselli, his great staff, and the foundation board, Tom Harper, Eric Clemens, and many, many others, too countless to, to mention, we gained increasing momentum to find partners that would help us build it. It is believed that Sir Isaac Newton, perhaps the greatest scientist of all time, once said, if I have seen a little further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. I am honored and privileged to be the first director of the most beautiful, the largest planetarium in the state of Washington. If I played any significant role in any of this, it is because I stood on the shoulders of giants with names like Cummins, Olson, Hoke, Duke, Musgrave, Roth, Saraceno, and many, many others. And to all of you, I say thank you. Finally, a facility can only reach its full potential when it's used. Come visit us. Bring your children, your grandchildren, your classes, and wear it out.
Thank you, Mike. We are pleased to have uh, with us today a couple of truly historical American figures. The first is actually a scientist and an astronaut. He is veteran of six space flights and spent nearly 1,300 hours in space. A couple of years back, he was here to bring the thrill of science to young students and the, to the community, and he attracted packed appearances. Please welcome Story Musgrave. Thank you so much, Rich. Man, a great crowd, but I'm, uh, I'm looking up, son, and so I do apologize for the glare also that I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm sending your way. Congratulations to everyone on, uh, on what you've done here and how well you did it and how fast you did it. I'm a project manager for the space program in the 60s, and this was an unbelievable project manager. So uh, over the years, I have helped people get planetariums. I have dedicated planetariums. I have helped people keep them alive when they got threatened, but also lost that battle a few times too. They went down. Uh, so planetariums are fantastic things. And so this is not only a facility that you're looking at here, it is a presence. It is a place, it is a geography. It is a halo. It's a spirit that is gonna pervade and be a symbol for you know, what CBC is. It's a meeting place. It's almost spiritual in a way. Uh, so planetariums deal, they tend to bridge that gap between cosmology and theology, between astronomy and philosophy. It, they tend to examine the big questions in life that people are so excited about. They are an incredible way to teach science and to teach, uh, to teach technology, but the way they teach is not just textbook and it's not just equations. The way they teach you might define as scenario-based experience people have an experience. So it not only touches their minds, it touches their heart, it touches their body. Scenario-based learning then is incredibly powerful, it's stimulating, it leads people on. You know, it's, it's a holistic way of learning things. You've already embarked on uh, the outreach to all the schools, you've already dedicated a huge bunch of time to the community. It's an extraordinary instrument for a college and community relations. Uh, that's the way uh, a planetarium works. So it's all kinds of great things that work that way. It is also a multimedia facility to communicate not just science and technology, but all the arts. And there's no facility like it for communicating art, <clears throat> for having community gatherings to be a meeting place. And so I do believe incredibly strongly in planetariums and what they can do for the college, for the universities, and what they do for the community and the relationships. So congratulations on all that you've done here. I wish you continued success uh, with this, this Grand Planetarium, and thank you so much for the privilege in, uh, in participating in this. Of course, we live in a gigantic planetarium, and if you'll all look to your left, and then kind of raise your eyes a little bit, you'll see uh, where Charlie Duke, the 10th the man out of 12, uh, walked up there on that, uh, that pale wafer up there in the sky. Um, Charlie uh, represents the reason we're all here today. He spent many hours helping with our Moore Observatory and here in the planetarium. Um, he, um, he came to us in 2008 and, and uh, pledged to help us uh, get this project going and promise to come back. Um, we're just so honored to have him here uh, to help us, uh, you know, uh, you know, move this project forward in its infancy. Um, Charlie spent more than 20 hours walking on the moon and, uh, and talked about it a little bit yesterday and we'll talk about it some more today to the community. Please welcome astronaut Charlie Duke. Good morning, everyone. It's a uh, pleasure for me to be back here in uh, uh, CBC to uh, take uh, opportunity to congratulate you on uh, all you have uh, accomplished here over the last few years. Uh, Mike has uh, been a dedicated uh, leader uh, in this uh, effort, and to have uh, done it uh, so quickly, I think, is a very, very uh, exciting uh, time. 
Uh, as Tori said, uh, planetariums are more than just teaching to tools. And uh, this facility, as uh, was demonstrated last night, is an uh, all-around uh, facility. You can just do so many things here. And uh, it's a great uh, tool for your community and the schools and the kids uh, here to learn about our universe. Uh, I got stimulated in science and, uh, uh, well, not science, but in astronomy uh, when uh, we were uh, uh, involved in Apollo in the early days. Uh, our navigation system used a sextant and a telescope to uh, search for stars and to mark on stars that would help us align our platform. And uh, uh, I could tell you the Big Dipper was about my only knowledge of astronomy in those days. <laughs> Uh, but after laying on uh, back at uh, Moorhead Planetarium at the University of North Carolina for days and days, uh, we got pretty good at, uh, at identifying the stars that we were going to use uh, on our trip to the moon. Uh, so not only can you stimulate the kids in astronomy, but all of the other areas uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that are available uh, through the various films and stuff that uh, can be used. Uh, it's just really tremendous, I think, uh, of what's been accomplished. Uh, I can uh, look back on my life and uh, the people that guided me and the mentors that guided me to took me uh, to a point as a young boy where I was dreaming big uh, about going to the moon and going on into uh, as, as a pilot. And this, uh, and I think we had the same. Uh, uh, responsibility is the word I'm searching for, uh, to carry our kids and grandkids. Uh, the mountains we climb, as somebody said a moment ago, our uh, kids and grandkids are on our shoulders and they're the future of our country and we need to it, encourage them and, uh, to do their best to study hard and to, and to, and to look farther to the next mountaintop. Uh, the things that we did, uh, they just take as commonplace. Uh, I went to, when I went to the moon, my uh, youngest son was five years old. And to be honest, he didn't think it was any big deal that his daddy was going to the moon. The whole neighborhood was going to the moon. Bill Anders was next door. Uh, 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 Neil Armstrong was a block away. Ron Evans, the whole neighborhood was astronauts. And so we were all going, going into space. And so, when are you going, daddy? Uh, was, basically, but uh, we went and we carried uh, these kids and now they, they can look forward to that next mountaintop, that next challenge. And this uh, uh, facility here will help them do that. And so I encourage you as parents and grandparents to bring your kids to encourage the schools to use this facility. It'll be a fascinating experience for the kids. And so uh, thank you for inviting me back and to be here on this beautiful morning to dedicate this great facility to all those who put such hard work into it. Uh, God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charlie. Um, our next speaker is a young man who represents the reason we're all here today. He spent many hours helping with our Moore Observatory and here in the planetarium. Uh, please welcome student and all around great young man, Carl Olson. There are three people that I would first off like to thank. One being President Cummins for asking me to do this. The second would be Mike Durst because he's probably the best boss I've ever had. And the third would be my father, Gary Olson, for being my father. If I had to sum up the planetarium in two words, it would probably be versatility and accessibility. It's versatile kind of for a glossed over reason. When I think of a planetarium, I think of the motion of stars or just stars in general. But this planetarium is a lot more than that. With that dome, we have access to a bunch of programs that aren't just astronomy based. We, we have a movie about coral reefs. Uh, I've heard that we have the possibility to get one that goes inside the human body. There are multiple options that we have that aren't just astronomy based. It's great that we have a partnership with Heritage so we can actually bring our astronomy program. But I don't want us to limit ourselves. A planetarium is great, but I want other things to be here. And 
that's really important for me, not just as a student, but for the other students, because there are younger people here. The first time I went to a planetarium, I believe it was around middle school age. And it, it was awe-inspiring just because I didn't know what it was, and we just saw things move, and it gave you a surreal experience instead of just looking at a textbook and calling that, giving the answers from that. Probably the most important thing that I think about this is the accessibility. When I went to the planetarium, it took us about an hour, an hour and a half to get there. It's pretty nice that we got this right on campus. And it's nice that we can give the community around the Tri-Cities everything right here instead of having to travel uh, to other places. As some people might know about the observatory that used to be on Rattlesnake, that was kind of a treacherous journey, not only in distance, but going up the hill. With here, we're right on campus, and there are a lot of schools nearby, and if anything, I'd encourage that we get as many schools involved as possible. We put a lot of hard effort, especially for Mike Durst and President Cummins, but we need to make sure that this is packed every day. We want to have as much opportunity for the students uh, on the aspect of that we have the best opportunity to give it to them because we have an academic background for this. We can teach people uh, an excitement in both math and science, and that we just have the sheer excitement aspect of being in a planetarium. We can give this back to the academic community, both young and old, from elementary kids to graduates, and then we also have it to the general public and the general community about coming here to the observatory and the planetarium, and just CBC in general. We need to make this school the best school ever. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. Fantastic. Um, you know, I, I hope we wear out the carpet, and I hope we have students at some point complain because we didn't put enough seats in the place. You know, that kind of, that, that would be success. Our, our next, uh, we could not have done this without the, the very generous support of two very important donors. And um, Dave Redder and Dave Schultz uh, formed the uh, Community Enrichment Foundation last year. And uh, they helped push us across the finish line with a $100,000 donation to this planetarium project. And here to speak, um, say a few words, is Dave Redder, who's the president of Windermere Real Estate Tri-Cities. Carl, that was a great speech. Dave, couldn't be, Dave Schultz couldn't be here today, and if you know him uh, well, you know how much CBC means to him, he's very regretful of that. When Dave first approached to me about the foundation, what he said to me was, Dave, our companies do a lot of, we do some nice things in the community, but it's, it's a lot of about events. They're here today and gone tomorrow, and nothing's tangible. That's about as tangible as it gets right behind us. Rich. Frank Beckel, thank you for allowing us to partner with you guys on this. It means a lot. Um, briefly, last night um, at, at the event that was held, uh, I got to see something I never, that I think most people that were there did not get to witness. Uh, I was sitting about seven seats away on the same row as uh, Charlie. And for an hour and a half, uh, I watched the movie, but I watched Charlie a lot. And what I, what I witnessed in his eyes and his facial expressions was the, the passion for what those guys do, what he did, uh, the commitment and the satisfaction. Uh, I think we all hope that with this planetarium and the things that's gonna bring the children of, of the Tri-Cities, that when they get to be some of our age, a little bit older, they can have that same look and feel as good about their life as Charlie did about his. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much. Uh, the other major contributor to this project is Bechtel National, which also contributed $100,000 for this project and, and really got us across the finish line. Bechtel's no stranger to supporting Columbia Basin College, having made a significant contribution to the WISE project, among other things that they've done for us. With us today is Bechtel's Waste Treatment Plant Project Director, Frank Russo. Frank has worked for Bechtel since 1973, and education has always been an important part of Frank's life, as evidenced by his bachelor's degrees in political science, business and law, and construction engineering. Please welcome Frank Russo. I am uh, taken aback by the amount of passion that you're hearing today in the dedication. Um, I've gone to dedications before, but rarely have I heard such real 
support. And it's really easy for me to understand because planetariums have been a part of my life. Um, when I was a young boy, I made my first visit to a planetarium in New York. And for me, it was the moment when I realized there was a bigger world than just me. And I could draw a clear line from that visit to a planetarium to where I stand today. Because it opened my mind. We talk about inquisitive, we talk about passion, we talk about opportunity. Those all stand very well for the values of Beckman. But for the values that I had, that I didn't know I had, until that visit to a planetarium, this became such an easy decision for us. When I look at the students out there, you in college, you've already made that decision. You're on the road to progress. But I look at the young people in the audience, the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. When you go inside that planetarium and see how big the world is and what part you can play in it, the opportunity is boundless. So I am thrilled to be part of this, and I thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Our final speaker is another person who's, who's been inspirational in this project, filmmaker Jeffrey Roth. Jeff was here about two years ago to share his film, The Wonder of It All, highlighting the astronauts who walked on the moon. Um, I, got, I had the chance to spend a little time with uh, Jeff the other night, and uh, I can tell you that one of his, uh, uh, that his brilliance as a filmmaker is that um, unlike uh, most people who make documentaries, uh, Jeff is, is interested in revealing his subjects rather than, than uh, having the film focus on himself. And it's really just quite brilliant the way that, uh, that he pieces together uh, uh, the wonder of it all to give this incredible portrait of, uh, of the moonwalkers. Um, I haven't been able to see 41 yet, but I'm looking forward to taking a, uh, a, good, a good gander at the, that this afternoon. So um, please welcome Jeff Roth. I'm going to have to have you call my wife to tell her that I'm brilliant. <laughs> no, that's going to work. Um, you know, I had some comments that I was going to say, but I think they've been said. But I have to say this. You know, I live, born and raised in Los Angeles, a town where it's pretty much, what can you do for me? And I think the thing that strikes me here, uh, in being here for the past few days and, and hearing people talk, have been instrumental in building this planetarium, is the sense that you wanted to do it as opposed to you had to do it. And you've got this great tool and this great sense of community, and it's just very humbling to see. And, uh, you know, you all should be very proud of where you live and the people that are here. Um, you've got also got this tool, especially for kids, uh, where you, we live in a world of Facebook and YouTube, and it's very difficult to get kids to look at a textbook and see an image that's about that big. But now you've got this where they could sit there and just be in awe that will blow any of that stuff away. So I thank you for having me. Enjoy this. It's a wonderful planetarium, and uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for recognizing that this is a fantastic place to live. There's, this place has such an incredible community, and uh, I think you nailed it. So thank you for, for noticing that. Um, we're going to cut the ribbon now, and uh, Frank's going to give us probably some instructions and line us up and all that kind of thing. Uh, but after we uh, cut the ribbon, uh, please come inside and warm up a little bit and see what kind of capability we have in there. There's some refreshments inside, and uh, we'll be showing uh, uh, Jeff's two films plus the film Black Hole, Black Holes, uh, uh, on a continuous loop starting at 12:30 until 9 o'clock tonight. The the two films um, that Jeff made will be rejected on a flat screen because they weren't they weren't uh, made in IMAX. And uh, Black Holes, though, is, a, is an IMAX film that, that displays the whole uh, capability of the dome. So, uh, so anyway, we look forward to, to, to you enjoying that. And thank you very, very much for being here this morning. It uh, means a lot to all of us. Thank you. Need all the speakers up here to, to help cut. Do you have scissors?